So if I open up VMware Workstation here, uh, this is VMware Workstation 9. It's very easy to create a new virtual machine. I'll go through the typical configuration here. I'll select the ISO image that I downloaded, click Next. I'll say that this is going to be a free Hyper-V 2012 VM. We'll just give it that name for now. I'll say Next here. Take the default disk size, 60 gigabytes, and we could take even the default memory for demonstration purposes. Now, with one gig of RAM on a free Hyper-V virtual machine, you're not going to be able to run any virtual machines inside. But actually, if you go in and you customize this, and let's say that I made this three gigabytes, roughly three gigabytes, and I added, let's say, a second CPU, a second processor, say close here, we'll create that new virtual machine, and then we should actually be able to run a virtual machine inside, a nested virtual machine. From here, we're going to go through what looks like the standard Windows 2012 server installation process, but notice it says Microsoft Hyper-V Server 2012. So I'm just going to take the default here by clicking Next. I'll click Install Now. I'll accept the license agreement. I'll do a custom installation. That would be a brand new installation of Hyper-V Server. I'll take the default on the disk space. And there we go, we are installing Microsoft Hyper-V Server. Now, this will take a few minutes, so just like one of those cooking shows where they already have a completed dish that they pull out of the oven as soon as they show you how to make it, I'm going to go up here to my Hyper-V Server tab where I have just installed Hyper-V Server. So I haven't even logged in yet. This is what the installation looks like when it's completed. So I'll go over here, I'll click uh, Control-Alt-Delete, I'll log in as administrator. I'll need to change the administrator's password because so far he doesn't have a password. And I just went full screen and this is what Hyper-V Server 2012 looks like. You get a couple command prompts. If you try to go down here to the bottom left of the start menu, no, there is no start menu. There's no taskbar. You just get a command line. Now you do get this sconfig utility that comes up by default. This is the server configuration utility. It's a text-based menu-driven interface that allows you to configure things like domain or workgroup membership, computer name, administrator account, remote management. You can enable remote desktop and connect to the server remotely, but no, you're not going to get a graphical interface. You're just going to get what you see here on the free Hyper-V Server 2012 console. You can set your network settings in here, date and time, log off, restart the server, shut down, uh, and of course perform other commands up here, even Hyper-V administration commands. But it's not going to be very fun to administer this server completely from the command line. So what I recommend you do usually is to go into the network settings, get the IP address information about this server. Notice that it's 10.0.1.119. And then you can go over to a desktop system where you've installed the Windows remote server administration tools. Those are completely free and they're going to include Hyper-V Manager. From there you could connect to this server and administer it remotely just as you would any other paid commercial edition of Hyper-V. You could also of course go to any server in your infrastructure that already has Hyper-V and you could use the Hyper-V Manager on that server to administer this server. So now that we know that the IP address there is 10.0.1.119 of course, if this was a production server, we'd set that to be a static IP address, but I happen to know that that's a automatic DHCP address assigned to this server, which is fine for testing and lab and demonstration purposes. So now let me go over to another server, actually, where I already have Hyper-V Manager installed, and let's connect to this server using that IP address so you can see how I can actually administer a free Hyper-V Server 2012 system using the traditional Hyper-V Manager graphical interface. All right, here I am on a Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V host that already has Hyper-V Manager installed. Of course, like I said, you don't need a Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V server just to administer a free Hyper-V Server 2012 system because you can just download the free Microsoft Remote Server Administration tools that include Hyper-V Manager and install those on your desktop. 
this system just already happens to have it, so I'm going to use it. I'm just going to connect to that IP address that we saw. And there's the free Hyper-V server. We never changed the name, so it just has the default name. No virtual machines are found on it yet. I can go in here to the Hyper-V server settings. And notice how, yes, even free Hyper-V server can do things like live migration, storage migration, and replication. I'll go ahead and click Cancel here. And let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I'll just click Next here. We'll just take the default name. I'm going to have to give it less RAM. I'm going to have to give it less RAM than normal because this is running on a free Hyper-V host that's actually running as a virtual machine. I'll just take some of the defaults here. I'm not going to create even a virtual disk for it. I just want to create the most basic shell of a virtual machine that I can. All right, we created a virtual machine in free Hyper-V Server 2012. Let's go ahead and start it up. Okay, so our new virtual machine is running. If I double click on it, That brings up the console of the virtual machine. No, we haven't yet installed an operating system inside of it, but you get the point here. We took a virtualization product, in this case VMware Workstation, we installed free Hyper-V Server 2012 inside as a virtual machine. Then inside of that, inside of free Hyper-V Server 2012, we installed another virtual machine, or we created another virtual machine. We we're able to power it on. So now we've got virtual machines here running two layers deep. It's a good way to test free Hyper-V Server 2012. You can use the free evaluation of VMware Workstation to do it. Or if you have a physical server available, you can install free Hyper-V Server 2012 on top. Free Hyper-V Server 2012 is a powerful Type 1 virtualization platform. It offers good performance and even the advanced features like live migration, storage migration, and Hyper-V replica. All of those new features available in Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V are also available in free Hyper-V Server 2012 with the exception of having a graphical console. But you saw how easy it was to connect from any other system that has Hyper-V Manager installed to the free Hyper-V Server 2012 create virtual machines, configure the Hyper-V server, etc.